Patients who are suspected to have T-cell lymphoma should always undergo a core needle biopsy to make the diagnosis. Um, we've learned that um, uh, excisional biopsies might be even better, uh, but are not always practically done uh, for safety re reasons or patient preference reasons. Um, and we've also learned that amongst uh, peripheral T-cell lymphomas, the diagnosis made at a, at a community center is often changed up to 25% of the time at an academic center. And most of those changes are within different subtypes of T-cell lymphoma, but expert review at an academic center is very important um, for reclassification, especially in the era where um, therapy may be different for different subtypes of lymphoma or eligibility to clinical trials may be different based on the histologic subtype. Um, otherwise, most patients present with other symptoms similar to other types of aggressive lymphomas, uh, so often with B symptoms like fevers, chills, or night sweats, often with uh, lymph nodes that are larger than normal um, that sometimes the patient brings to notice. Um, and patients can present with bone marrow involvement relatively commonly, so we also check for bone marrow traditionally. Um, to stage patients, we usually use a PET CT scan, um, as that's been better to look at extranodal sites of peripheral T cell lymphoma. Historically, patients with per, uh, the systemic peripheral T cell lymphomas, ex that means excluding the cutaneous T cell lymphomas, have been treated with uh, systemic chemotherapy for curative intent. And if you look back at data from the um, the International uh, Peripheral T-Cell Lymphoma Project, or from the Swedish uh, National Registry, um, as well as many other older registries, um, you can see that most patients end up succumbing to their disease. So the five-year survival is often quoted as about 20%, and the uh, five-year, uh, sorry, the five-year survival is usually quoted at about 30% or so, with the five-year progression-free survival being about 20% 20, 20 or so. Um, that means that while some of our patients are cured of this disease, um, they're a subset of the patients, and many of our patients will relapse from their initial therapy. And this means that we have to do better with initial therapy. And so there have been efforts to add medicines to a chopped backbone, which tends to be the most commonly given treatment for this disease, to augment the, the rate of cure. Um, some efforts have been made to follow CHOP-like therapy with an, a stem cell transplant from your own cells or an autologous stem cell transplant. Um, and we think that that improves um, the rate of cure by some fraction, uh, often quoted in the order of one in five patients, um, if you just look at phase two studies that were not randomized. Um, other efforts to improve on CHOP have been to add a toposide to CHOP, and we think that that improves the complete remission rate from this disease, which is a meaningful outcome. Um, and more recently, uh, we've there's been a, a large international randomized study to look at adding CD30 to CHOP-like backbone um, to see if this would improve outcomes in peripheral T-cell lymphoma.